Okay, so now here's, here's my fun little gadget I built. Um, and I built this for you. Uh, does, does any, to, to find an intermittent short circuit in a 12 volt circuit um, without blowing a bunch of fuses. Now, I, I came up with this. I discovered this when I was like 17 years old, working kind of in a little truck garage. Um, you know, it's part time, my little summer job and a little over the holiday kind of job. And I noticed that what, when they would have a problem, the lighting in a truck trailer or something in a vehicle, um, first they would blow a few fuses. And then when they got tired of blowing fuses, my boss would take the fuse and wrap it in a piece of foil, stick it in there. And he says, we're going to do a smoke test. And he'd plug that thing in and then the wires would start sm getting hot and smoking where the current was. And when you found the spot where it stopped smoking, that's where the short was. Now, I'm not kidding you. This is like scary stuff. I'm looking at it, I'm thinking there's got to be a better way to do this. So I came up with this idea of using a test lamp. So all I did was I put a test lamp in place of the fuse and that limited the current to a couple of ampers. And I could go wiggle around on things until the darn light would go out. And then I'd know that I'd found where the short circuit was. But there's actually a better way to do that now that we have inexpensive DC clamp meters. Which, so I've been experimenting with this. I think this is just a really, really great technique. So first off, what we have to do is understand what the complete circuit looks like. So an open circuit here, here's our little thing. We've got our battery, we've got our bulb, we've got an open switch, we've got a fuse. This is not a complete circuit. There's no current flowing. The, the bulb doesn't light, all is just sitting there. If we close the switch, what we end up with is an, a few amperes of current flowing through the bulb. So it's flowing from here through the fuse, through the switch, through the bulb, through the filament, and then back kind of in this little endless loop. And so that's what we call a complete circuit, okay? Now, if something goes wrong, you do not have the full path. So I'm thinking, I said, okay, so this isn't, isn't really, when we say a short circuit, what we mean is it's a shorter circuit. So it doesn't take the long way around, it takes the short way around. So it's got a shorter circuit path than was originally designed. And because this piece of wire doesn't have any appreciable resistance, you get full current. So instead of, in this case, maybe one amper or so of current through the bulb, in this case, you end up with 100 amperes or more of current through the short. Now, that would normally blow a fuse, but do not wrap this with foil. But if you've wrapped it with foil, you could be dropping 100 amperes of current through that wire that's maybe rated for you know, 10 or 20 amperes. It gets hot very rapidly and starts burning up. Don't do that. It's a bad, bad thing. So they've come up with these little LED fuses. You guys have probably seen these. When in the 12 volt circuits, if there's a short, the LED lights up because the fuse has died and this little LED, but it only puts a few milliamps of current through there. It's not enough to go trace anything. It just tells you, yeah, I got a short, but it doesn't tell you where that short circuit is. So I came up with this. Okay, okay. I, this is my original thing. You tr you stick a troubleshoot a, a trouble light across where the fuse would have been, and then you close the switch, and now it limits it to say one amper or so of current through the test light. But it still doesn't tell you where how to trace where the wiring is until you do this. So if you take, if you have a test light like this, and let's say somewhere in that whole wiring mess, there's a short circuit. And all you do is you get yourself a DC clamp meter. And if you clamp it around, so you put this in here, you turn this on, now you have an amper or so of current flowing through here. You take your clamp meter and you just start clamping it around the wire. And you clamp it here and you got an amper and you clamp it here and you got an amper. And when you clamp it over here, there's no current flow so that you know somewhere between here and here is the short. 
So then you can visually, whoops, you can visually inspect that and start to find where it is. I had one guy that he had a short circuit in his DC wiring for two years, three years, and none of the technicians could find it. I showed this to him in under a half an hour, he went through and found out that it was, it current got as far, this far in the ceiling and didn't get over on the other side of it. And he looked in it and somebody had driven a nail right through the 12 volt wiring and shorted the thing out. Now I'm gonna show you how this works right in front of me. So I built us our, our, little, our little test bed here. And I think these are so cute. Now right here, this is my little tester that I built. This is nothing more than a regular fuse. It's blown that I went and soldered two wires on and I ran it into a little 12 volt bulb. Now this one, I would probably use a bigger one, but this is a nice little one that draws like a quarter of an ampere or so. So this is my test unit. Over here though, here is my normal fuse. This is my fuse that we're gonna blow. Here's my, here's my regular light switch. And here is my short circuit that I can put in place. So here's my light down at the end of the hallway or whatever. I push this down here and my light here is now gone on. We can go ahead and take this unit. Most of these you've got to like zero out. We're gonna to go to the DC scale. We're gonna zero this out and we're gonna see that we have approximately, whoops, there we go. About a quarter of an amp flowing through there. And we can predict we'll have a quarter of an amp or so flowing through here, right? Let me see if I think I can turn on the light here. There we go. About you know two tenths of an amp here. So now, if though, let's say that I have a short circuit in here. So I'm gonna turn this little guy right here and you're gonna watch this little thing spark and arc. Everybody see that? I've blown this fuse. Now, if I were to wrap this in foil or stick a nail in there or something, and I still had my short circuit, what would happen is I would burn up wiring and we don't wanna do that. So a good way to, to get around that here, you pop the fuse, come on, get out of there. And you take your little light tester that you had, right? I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, plug in my test light. And this does two things. It, it, it gives me a visual indication of what's going on. Plus it goes in and limits the current. So when I do this, now this thing has got current going through it. So we can go in there, we'll re-zero our meter. Dun, 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 there we go. And we can see that there's about, mm, these, these things change depending on when you move about a third, yeah, a quarter or so of uh, amper of current going through there. And I would say that it's still gonna be here, right? We still have current flowing through this section. Whoops, where are we? Oh, no, not through that section, there. Not through that section at all because it's shorted ahead of it. We don't have any going to the bulb over here. So we know that that's where that that has stopped. If we go look at that, see we go, we've got no current flowing there. But if we go ahead and open this up, you can see what's gonna happen is we are now going to have this light go dim when this one comes on. So as you start jiggling the wiring, you can actually watch your lights do this. And you can say, okay, this short circuit happened somewhere over here, C.24, but stopped over here. So what the idea is you start just working your way down through the entire system until if you see that you're measuring a couple of amperes of current, then you are still inside of the short circuit loop. As soon as you get outside of that, where that short circuit is, now you know that you are inside of that, outside of that loop. So it's just a really a matter of going in, getting closer and closer until you find the spot. And it could be a nail driven through something. It could be wiring laying over top of, um, of a metal strip that's, that's um, made contact with it. It could be a whole variety of causes. And this 
this little guy works fine, although I think that um, something like a brake light bulb that draws maybe two amperes may be easier to see than a quarter of an amper, but um, pretty much anything. And then what you do is like, I'm sure you're gonna have a blown fuse. All you've got to do, all I did was um, just poke my wires down in there, you know, my solder, and solder, soldered a pair of wires on it and put a little light thing in there. Does that make sense? So all you need is to make some gadget like this that will allow you when the next time you have a, a short circuit that keeps blowing fuses, allows you to go in there and just start sorting the stuff out. But make sure that you are using a, um, a clamp meter that's rated for DC in the clamp. So this is a little Southwire uh, 21050T, zero T. But you know, there's a whole variety of these ones to make them. If you have one of the older ones and it's um, only an AC clamp, you can't test DC circuits. I think these are really handy though, because you can look at battery charging, you can look at starter motor currents, you can look at all kinds of things. I think these are really, really uh, useful tools. I think this one's less than 80 bucks from Southwire. Um, I think it's a really, really cost-effective tool. Okay.